And welcome to chapter two. Well, after after one true serious moment in this film on Mr. Freeze's backstory, we've abandoned that for total silliness instead. Observe. To be fair, we get to the one good scene in this movie, and here it is. It's Bruce and Alfred talking very seriously about his situation. Indeed, that is true. This was one of the last films that Michael Goff would appear in before his death a few years ago. Ah, yes. This is the one flashback sequence that we seem to get out of Bruce Wayne. You see, George Clooney had the idea that, well, Bruce Wayne is 35 years old, has access to all of the greatest gadgets in the history of everything, has all this great money, so why even bother brooding anymore over the death of his parents? But in our taking us out of a more serious moment, we get a silly moment instead. Dr. Crazy Guy is making his recording his report when he happens to notice a rumbling in the very spot where he pushed Dr. Isley. And like a phoenix from the ashes, she... No, I'm sorry. I'm afraid it's sillier than that. I'll bet she feels so much yummier. Jaden? That's his name? Oh, well, it's not going to matter very much. He'll be dead in a few minutes. Joel Schumacher had said and had declared that Poison Ivy is the most beautiful woman on earth, but if you kiss her, you die. And we see this happening as Dr. Jaden's tongue turns green. He's then pushed over and easily dies. And then everything starts to resemble a bit of a Spice Girls video. Yes, she flakes out and destroys everything in the lab, sort of reminiscent of Selena Kyle's transformation to Catwoman when she flaked out and destroyed her apartment. Only this isn't quite as exciting. She's about to destroy a beaker with the, with the letters for Wayne Enterprises on it, but she realizes she needs, she needs a henchman. So she calls upon Bane. And now for this scene, the scene that everybody talks about. Mr. Freeze and his henchmen singing along to I'm Mr. White Christmas, I'm Mr. Snow. Rankin Bass must be so proud. Yes, there is a method, of course, to his madness. He's doing all this to find a cure for his frozen wife, Nora. So, to be as fair to this movie as possible, there is at least some drama to it. 
Unfortunately, the drama is downplayed. And now we cut to one of the few daytime scenes and have ever seen in a Batman movie, with mysterious schoolgirl knocking on the front door of Wayne Manor. Yes, this unfortunate schoolgirl is, of course, Alicia Silverstone from Clueless. Hmm. I am usually attracted to a woman in a tie, but not her. After all, there were numerous fat jokes about Alicia Silverstone. I will not make those fat jokes here. Yes, exactly why Barbara is, is Alfred's niece in this movie, I don't know. Isn't she supposed to be Commissioner Gordon's daughter? Yes. She is very British. She doesn't even have an accent like her uncle. Yes, we'll see about that later. So now that we've met Barbara Gor Barbara Pennyworth, it's time for Alfred to do a little computer thing. He's trying to reach a relative of his of his in England. Oh, he's working in he's working in India, not England. Never mind. But it turns out that Miss Barbara Gore Pennyworth has a secret life that no one else knows about. Trust me, when it's revealed, it's going to be a major letdown. But it turns out that Miss Barbara Gore Pennyworth has a secret life that no one else knows about. Trust me, when it's revealed, it's going to be a major letdown. Meanwhile, we get a nice crooked angle of Gotham City that does look pretty nice. It is kind of reminiscent of the first film a little bit. But Gossip Gertie is on the radio announcing that billionaire Bruce Wayne will be presiding over some amazing new space telescope. Underling, mm. paid by minute. It turns out that Wayne Enterprises is donating a telescope to Gotham Enterprise, to Gotham Observatory. Exactly why I don't know. Just to look in space. That's Gossip Gertie, by the way, who you might remember from the previous film Batman Forever as the annoying gossip columnist Gossip Gertie, who incidentally is played by Elizabeth Sanders Kane. The widow of Bob Kane. Reflected back to our very own Gotham City for observation. Just don't point it at my bedroom. You don't want to know what goes on in there. Incidentally, Julie Madison there is played by Ella McPherson. Don't worry, it's not going to have much relevance to anything. But Ms. Isley then bursts in, calling the police fascist bulldogs. She tries to uh, she tries to rationalize that what uh, that what Wayne Enterprises is doing is killing Mother Earth. 
But of course, Wayne then points out that what Bar what Ms. Isley wants is ridiculous, and a lot of people would die in the process. But you know, environmental crazies, they don't care about people. Well, whatever you say, Lisa Simpson. Mr. Freeze is then watching his, the wedding to his wife on, on videotape, and he sheds one single tear that turns into ice. Uh, excuse me, Chief. I got something here you might want to see. Yes, so do I. The rudest thing in the world is perhaps an online film reviewer. And so we come to this charity auction event, which looks more like something right out of a Spice Girls video. I think it is a Spice Girls music video. And yes, the Cape Crusader, who once shunned the, the spotlight, stole hidden photos taken of him, now shows up at a sexist auction. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! I really despise this character, which is a shame to say, because... Elizabeth Sanders Kane does her best. But now it's time for an ape dance. A slow ape dance. Yes, it turns out that it's actually Poison Ivy. And she uses her pheromones on every man in the entire hippodrome or whatever. And also on Batman and Robin. Yes, definitely something out of a Spice Girls music video. Incidentally, that's supposed to be a jazzy version of the Coasters song, Poison Ivy. Yes, so she works her pheromone magic on them. And very true to the comic books of the 60s, Batman and Robin begin fighting over her. Although I don't believe in the 60s comics, they actually bid on her with money. Hmm, way to dumb down Commissioner Gordon. I'll include an evening of my company for the winner. I'll bring everything you see here, plus everything you do. I paid $50,000 for poison ivy. I'll bet you do.
Go back to Alabama. What? A bad credit card. Heart be still. Crepe Suzette. A bad credit card. We understand that Bruce Wayne is a gozillionaire and all that, but is it really necessary for the richest superhero you know to have a bad credit card? I mean, that's the sign of the apocalypse. I have no more comment about that. What do you say we meet again in the next section of this story?